down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. Hey, what's going on, Savvy Investors? This is your boy, Steve Van Kallenberg. Tuning it up in my closet at the Crizzo. Got back early. I had to get to the house for the children. My son was by himself. So sometimes you got to run into that role of a parent and not be gangster business all the time. So I came back and then my my son had a friend over and I was like, whoop, this is a great opportunity for me to do a podcast because I want to keep this ball rolling. I want to keep these things coming out. Now, sometimes these subjects are going to be off the wall. I'm going to be up front with you. I'm, I'm just going to start going back to the old school. If you listen to all 600-something podcasts, you are a champ because I don't know if I could listen to myself for that long. But I want to, I really want to start doing some more value. And the only way that I can think of that is this things that randomly pop in my mind. And then at the same time, things that, that I'm learning or something that I see that happens that I could – breathe life into somebody and so we're gonna start off with that first one i'm gonna try to breathe breathe life this individual actually listens to my podcast and so i was like um i ran into this person a couple weeks ago and i'm like i i I couldn't believe that he listened to the podcast and why would you say that van calenberg not not i'm trying to talk myself down now you everybody should be listening to the podcast uh, as Grant Cardon has a goal of 1 billion people. Hey, that sounds like a good goal. I I would love for everybody to listen to the podcast, but not everybody's savvy. Not everybody's motivated and not everybody wants to work because when you listen to this podcast, you're going to go work. You're going to work hard. But this this scenario that I'm going to roll out to you was very interesting. Is this this investor that I was talking to and I was humbled that he listens to the radio show because I'm like, how does it bring value to him? Because this dude has 50, 70 units, and he has been grinding it down for 20 years, 20 years, 20 years. I mean, this dude, I mean, he, he, in my mind, he has arrived in his mind. I don't know what's going on. And he, he started telling me that he was physically doing the work. And I was like, Oh no, here we go. Not another episode on you, why you shouldn't be cutting the grass. And then when I dropped that podcast, I actually got some flack. I mean, you know, I, I do get a lot of positive feedback, but a lot of dudes blew me up, got pissed at me and said, oh, I can't believe you dogged that dude for cutting the grass. It's a great learning lesson for my son. You know, Listen, all right. <laughs> my, my wife is just like y'all. It's a great learning lesson to teach them hard work. That ain't teaching somebody hard work is not throwing them on a on, on a lawnmower and think they're going to understand the difference. You got to understand there's more. What's the perception here? What are they trying to do? Why are they doing it, right? Why are you cutting the grass? Well, to make some money. When, uh, hard, wait, wait a minute. Make money. <laughs> make money, right? How is that hard work? Because if you wanted to teach them hard work, Hard work could be writing an essay. Hard work could be writing a book. Hard work could be running a podcast. Hard work could be thinking and using your mind, okay? So anyway, this homeboy that I've known for a little while, and, you know, I've known him for a long time, actually. I just started hanging out with him every once in a while, and I just, my heart broke that he's, he was exhausted. I saw in his eyes, he was exhausted. He does all his property manager, his management, exhausted. Just exhausted, exa- like, like he's got some prison sentence going down, and he's trying to, you know, fulfill these his obligation to what is what I say. What what do you what you doing? Why aren't you enjoying the labor of love or the labor that you already have accomplished? How many more units do you need? Fifty is probably enough. Seventy depends on how you roll. But the reality is. I know this guy's a pretty thrifty dude. I know that he's not taking lavish and stuff. I know he doesn't roll up in a in an outrageous vehicle, which is cool. You know, if you want a super duper vehicle and that costs, you know, super duper, that's cool with you. But my heart just broke because he's exhausted. And if you're exhausted, you ain't you ain't being 100. You're not being who you are called to be. And so literally I wrote I went home, got the tablet out. Not a, not a, not a, not an Apple tablet. I'm talking about the old school yellow tablet. And I started writing down and I'm like, I wrote down cutting grass. And then I go, the best use of your time. And this is what I wrote. I go, you, you don't, whoever, whoever hears me, whoever this is speaking to get ready. 
okay? You might as well grab a pen because I, I don't know where the Holy Spirit came up with this stuff, but I wrote this down and this is the first line. You don't trust yourself. You don't trust yourself because what you're doing is that you're defaulting to labor when you have a, a skill that could produce and that skill can hire someone else to do the labor so you can do what your skill is and what that could be. It could be deal negotiations, deal finding, ministry, whatever. You're telling me if I was called to be a minister and I'm out cutting the grass and no one's around, how is that? How am I doing my fulfillment? How am I doing what I'm called to do? You're defaulting to labor that's just, and you're not using your mind. You could, you could sit at home and make more money thinking, planning, building relationships. And I'm going to bust you with this one. You must change to grow, not labor. What's the best use of your time? What can you do? All right, now we're moving on to the next one. Hopefully that last one makes some sense. If I need to clarify, I don't know. I just wrote, scribble some stuff down on a piece of paper. But whatever it is, I, I hope that that encourages you. And, you know, every time I see the grass being cut, is that fulfilling that person? Maybe they own a business. Is it? Is it just, what is it? Are you using, the main gist is are you using the best, are you doing using being the very best use of your time? Okay. Figure it out. All right. Here's another one. You got to do the weekly update. Yep. What in the world are you talking about? Van Kallenberg? Yep. You got to do the weekly update. I, I I've, I've noticed this. I just, I'm, I'm listening to the MJ DeMarco book. Phenomenal. Uh, escape the great rat race. Bang, bang. It's, it's, it's a great book. Um, but, you know, there he has this fictional story in there between this husband and wife. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate to coach a lot of people. And, you know, a lot of men in the beginning when Rich Dad Poor Dad came out, it, it was difficult to get the spouse to buy in on buying assets versus liabilities. OK, you know what? What's the big vision where we're going with this working all the time? student debt, whatever. Right. But it boils down to a plan. It boils down to being on the same page with your spouse or even your business. And so again, this is another random thought that I just wrote down real quick, dirty, but, but you need to have a weekly update. And I was, I was visiting with a, with a guy and newly married. And I was like, man, here's the deal. I could see that you may be a spender and this person may be a saver. Nothing wrong with that. I think that's good. I think that's healthy. I think that's a, a way to roll in a marriage, right? So, you know, if someone was a spender all the time, you guys would be broke. And then if the saver, you know, save all your money for what? And that, that, should, that should be its own podcast. I need to help the savers out there. Where are you going with all saving all the money, <laughs> right? You waiting for a rainy day? Great. How much is the rainy day? Where is the rainy day? How far is the rainy day? How's it going to go with the rainy day? But here's the thing. I think you need to have a weekly update. And so I was just, just visiting with this cat and I was like, look, you know, in the beginning of, of a marriage, of a business, of anything, you, you need to meet weekly. And I just, for you young people out there and newly married folks, you need to meet. And if you're not newly married, if you're still married or married, you need to meet with your wife on Saturday mornings. It's the best time. I don't remember what book I read this in. But it's the best time, you know, there's nothing clouding your judgment of I got to get to work or I got to do this. It's Monday or I got to go to a closing or whatever the case may be in your world. But just to just allocate some time. You could do it subconsciously or you can actually put it in your calendar. And at nine o'clock, bang, bang, my wife and I, we're going to talk about the finances or we're going to talk about planning a trip. And I'm telling you, this works because you got to get on the same page. You don't want to be going down the road and your spouse is on this page and you're on this page and you want to go mountain biking every day and, you know, and someone else just wants to, you know, <laughs> stay at home and go fishing. So you, if you do these weekly updates, you do it in business. You, you talk about where's our money, where we're at and where we want to go. OK, you could watch a video together. 
You can discuss what love language you want to be on the same page weekly and have no confusion. Like, so and your wife may operate or husband may operate visually. Men are visual. So you may take a screenshot of something that you want to do, or you want to watch a video together of something that you want to do. But I, I believe that, and, and I do this with my company, when I get with my partner, I'm like, you know, and it's on Thursdays, every Thursday, you, you better believe it. We're having a meeting, we're having a team meeting, where are we going, what are we doing, and how are we going to get there? Where we're we going, how are we going to do it, who's going to help us? Who can we hire? Who can, who could help us? Who's the professional? Can we handle it? What's going on? All right. So that's on your weekly update. Bang, bang. You could do it. I know you can. So don't be lazy. Saturday is not the day of rest. Saturday is the day to get it on and get organized and start hitting those goals. Start dreaming. And if you don't get together and you don't do it, you guys will be on two separate teams, two separate worlds, and then they'll collide and you'll have massive problems. All right. Here's another one. You got to ask for help. I mean, I've said this stuff. I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. Now, you may new to the podcast because I was fortunate just to go speak at this leadership thing. And uh, I've noticed some people have been reaching out to me, uh, some young kids. I I appreciate you. Thank you for all the encouragement. I'm glad that I spoke to you and that motivated you in some form or fashion. But here's the deal. You got to ask for help, right? I mean, pride is a mother effer. And what I mean by that is like when you're prideful, you lose. You can't, you get, I'm telling you, I bite my tongue all the time now. I, you know, there's, you know, into a certain level of a degree, but I do bite my tongue. Like I may not uh, appreciate this type of person in my world, but this type of person may be working hard in an industry that I don't like digging ditches, let's say, but they, they are wild. I, I just, within a certain degree, I just deal with it. But in reality, you got to drop that pride and you got to ask for help. How? You can ask for your help in anything, in whatever it is. Even if you don't know how, you know, like I just asked for help for food prep. Okay. I asked this gal, she just loves cooking. I asked her for help. What items can you freeze? How often can you, how long can you, what containers do you do? And (coughs) vice versa, I helped, I helped another person out explaining Instacart. I mean, think about it. Instacart has been out for a minute. And this gal, this is this is the exact conversation I had with this gal. She she was walking me through, you know, what items are the best items to freeze, what food ingredients, blah blah blah. Where, you know, and I'm like, yeah, hey, this is how I get my food delivered, and it costs this much. And she's more of a thrifty type person, but I'm like, then I try to break it down to her: how many hours am I saving by not going to the store? And then it, what if I'm not overpaying? Or not over over buying things I necessarily don't need, right? And so it was interesting because I showed her my app, and I, so far, thus, I've saved forty hours of my life. And I'm going to be real with you; I am kind of weird about it. Like I, I figure it out just real simply: twenty minute drive to the store, ten or fifteen, depending on where you live in the city. If you live in the city, live in the country, whatever. You got time travel. Then you get to the store. No way you could get in the store for no five ten minutes. You go in the store, it's 20, 30 minutes, and then 20 minutes back. Let's just say you're smooth and silky, like a tall glass of milky, and you get in there, 10 minutes. Let's just say 20-minute drive, 20 minutes in there, 20 minutes back is one hour. Well, how much money can you make in one hour, right? How much are you worth in one hour? You know, even if you get paid $20 an hour, okay, Even if you get paid $10 an hour, whatever you get paid, I'm telling you, having someone else do it for you, you could multiply yourself and move on because whatever you're doing, something else is failing. If you're trying to mine deals, if you're trying to build a relationship with somebody, but you're at the grocery store, what is a grocery store going to do for you? Ask people for help on partnerships. How do partnerships work? What's the pros? What's the cons? Ask somebody in a partnership. Ask somebody because, you know, when in the beginning, when I started my young career here in real estate and business in general, and everybody was anti partnership. Like, I'm serious. I'm like, and granted, even when I started my business in 1992, and if you didn't know this, I'm going to give you some trivia here. But when I started the business, first out, it was called G.O.D. Productions. I'm not going to lie to you. I know that's cheese ball. But G.O.D. Productions means God's grace, obey his word, deny the world. And then I had a partner at that time, and it didn't go well. Now, I was young, 18, 
Didn't understand. I thought I was going to be some super DJ. Did not understand the world business or writing things down or communicating properly. Now we have text messages and we have emails. And back then we didn't have that stuff. And I remember I didn't get paid on a gig. And I was like, man, there's something not right here. The money that now I could have been off, but I, I dissolved that partnership. And since then I was kind of jaded. And so I named the next company m M&M Productions, bang, bang. It's still in existence today, 20-something years later, still rolling, kicking like a funky fried chicken. And uh, that means Messiah in me. That's what m M&M and Productions means. And I just named it because God can't burn me, so it, Messiah in me. It's really cool when someone else that works there or operates there, in, in it, m M&M and Productions, Messiah in me, in you. So... Anyway, but it boils down to a partnership. So for years have gone by, probably 10, 15 years of ignorance, I had this weird perception that partnerships suck. And they all fail and they're terrible and they all out to steal. That's that's such bogus and lies and that's suppression. And I'm so dumb. I'm telling you now, Steve Van Kallenberg, Savvy 2.0, I'm about partnerships 100 Because I can't do it all, and someone is better at accounting than I am. Praise the Lord. Someone is better at this creative than I am. Someone is better at coding than I am. SEO, partnerships, business. Some, And I've noticed, and I've gotten into more partnerships, and I hope that they go the distance, right? And I I, I have figured out systems in place called writing it out, an operating agreement communicating my expectations, asking for their expectations, writing it down. But I still ask for help with my partnerships or ask for help and then become a partner with that person. You just never know who you're going to find and how far you could scale. So I did a podcast last week about my partner. And I'm telling you, within two years, I probably had more success in that business with a partner than I have for 15 years by myself. Ooh, quote me on that one because that sounds like a, a class, a podcast. More success working with a partner in two years than 15 years on my own. Bang, bang. Come on, we're writing content as I speak right now. Come on, flow to me, the Holy Ghost, because I need it. You need it too. Someone just ask for help. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the measure of what's going on here. Also, how to manage your assets. Ask for help. How do you, Stephen, how do you manage your assets? What you mean? Like apartments? What you mean? Uh, finances? Uh, stock market? What do you mean? Get specific when you're asking for help too. I went and spoke at this leadership thing, which was bomb, and a bunch of young kids that are just balling. And they, can you mentor me? I mean, as somebody walks up to me, I'm like, you know, and I don't want to be disrespectful. Sure. And what? And they couldn't respond. <laughs> I mean, first of all, I'm asking, I'm proud that they asked to help, but you got to be specific on what you need help with and then try to Google it up, try to figure it out, try to find it, try to try to get to the, the best. And then what I figured out now is now I write out exactly what I wanted to do, Ex- exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone that can take these podcasts and blah, 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 blah. Or here's my favorite. I need someone to transcribe this information which I already have that figured out, but transcribe this information and do this with it, blah, 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 blah. Or, or I need this person to reread, what, whatever the case may be, be specific on what you're looking for. And then when you know specifically what you're looking for, start asking for people. Now, if you, if you can't fig- articulate it, then you call someone like me. And then sometimes I just get right to the point. looks like you're looking for this person. It looks like you're looking. And sometimes some people receive things differently than other people. And that's been my, I'm going to finish with that one. Let's get to that to to the second. Anyway, and ask for help. Don't take no for an answer on that one. Okay. Like when someone says no the first time, that's okay. Keep asking them. Keep, keep grinding. Okay. Someone, here's the, the kicker. Someone's helped you. Someone's helped them. Okay, so you really want to get into the music business or the film business or the real estate business, right? Or an accounting business. Don't take no for an answer. I give you permission to say yes. Don't take no. (laughs) Get to the yes, not to the no. Here's the reason why. 
Because people are busy and they're just used to saying no. And so offer something that you can deliver to them. I love it in Rich Dad Poor Dad. Work for free for somebody else. And I guarantee, I'm telling, there, there's a thousand jobs I need help with. You want a mentorship, hey, I'm going to give you, a, I'm telling you right now, I need help marketing the Red Tree Center. Actually, I was going to reach out to somebody, but if someone has any interest, you want to, I got thousands of dollars of courses that I sell, coaching, whatever you need, I, I, I can try to help you. But I need this. I'm specific. My building is 80, 75 percent occupied. I would really like to be at 95, 20 percent more. I need help marketing. What kind of marketing do I do? I need help. Someone cold calling people, someone driving around, uh, knocking on doors saying, hey, we, we have a better office right around the corner. That's what I heard from my commercial friends. That's how you get it re- or, or some ideas how to reposition the property. But don't take no for an answer. Offer your services. Do something that you can be of value to somebody else. Create value for them and create value for yourself. You need help with systems. Whew, come on. Man, I'm telling you, I think success of business in general is all ran on systems. Just look at McDonald's. Look at Chick-fil-A. Somebody said this silly joke. Hey, uh, maybe Chick-fil-A could run for the president of the United States. It would run smoother. I, it's systems. It's all boils down to systems. If you're not good with systems, you're good at something, find someone that's good at systems. Honestly, that's all I do all day is write manuals at this stage of my career, my life. I don't know where I'm at. I'm supposed to be retired, but I'm, I, I just keep grinding and out. I'm writing systems all day. When this happens, this happens. When this happens, then I love this thing called automation and Zephyr and all these other nuances of technology and learning from other people. That's the skill. I'm good at it. I think I am because the machine runs. The system that I wrote 20 years ago is still running today. It's not about P. I mean, it's not about direct mail. It's not about packages in the mail. It's not about phone calls. It's about emails and texts. But it's the same system that I wrote 20 years ago. It's working. Someone's really good at systems. Find that person. Trade with them. Sales. You need help with sales, man. I love to sell. What are you selling? I can make a few phone calls. Make some sales for you. Vice versa. Maybe you know someone that could use an office space, make that sale for somebody else and help them. Okay. Oh, I know it's too long. Here we go. We're done. And here's the final one. This is what I just learned. Listen to me. This is what I just learned. And I was starting to say it earlier, but I cut myself off. Some people that you work with need to be told what to do. I've, I've been coaching for a while now. I'm not sure how long, I mean, probably since 2012, I've been coaching. So I'm rolling about nine years now coaching I'm in beginning my coaching consulting practice was kind of disaster in my mind and it just sometimes I try to be Tony Robbins and yell at people dumb sometimes I you know I would be passive dumb sometimes I, I don't know what I was thinking I didn't have any formal training in coaching and I don't think you can find formal training uh, you know there's there's all kinds of weird things on the internet about being a coach I'm telling you they're not they're bobo but what I realized there's some people that I coach or staff members that I work with that just need to be told what to do. I need you to do this. Call these five people, write this down, create this manual, create these templates, call this place and get the phone. You see what I'm saying? Some people just need to be, some people just need direction. You may need direction. You may be lost right now. My man that I've known has got 50-something units, still cutting grass. I mean, I know he's got to be a millionaire by now, or he's lying. You, you, you can't have that many units. You're wasting time. You're being inefficient, okay? They need to be told what to do. Yo, stop. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Go, go volunteer somewhere. Cut, you know, Do something else. Go love on your child because – time is limited and it shouldn't be doing something that's going to affect your, 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 <laughs> your allergies. All right. I know that's silly. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm kind of back. Please keep giving me the feedback, text messages. Appreciate you for the text messages saying, Hey, glad to have you back. If you have a suggestion, man, I'm open, whatever it is, I'm down. Let's grow together. Let's make this the best year of your life. Go buy an asset. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. 
Connect on Twitter at Landlord Book and always be buying assets. 